Hello guys, welcome to Sandy Mix Online Tutorials. On today's episode, we'll be discussing on electrostatics. Welcome back. The branch of engineering that deals with charges at rest is what we call electrostatics. Now, we, you can see an example of this when you rub a glass rod against a silk material. Let us see this the glass rod with the positive, 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 and negative, negative. And let us see this is the silk with the positive, 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 and the negative, negative, negative. Now, when this glass rod is rubbed against this silk, it absorbs. There are some of these positive, uh, uh, these positive electrons, and it and it added to to this one, making this one positively charged and making this one negatively charged. That's how. And when it is when it happens like this, there's some there's some medium that we call the medium we call um the dielectrics. We call them dielectrics. Now, the, the dielectrics in now in this case is the air, is the air around this object. Now the air around this object is what keeps this charge intact. What keeps this charge intact in this silk rod and, and in this silk material and what keeps the charge intact in this in this rod material. So when this air is keeping this these charges intact, we say that this that the charges here are static or we can call them stay or we can call them stationary. So in this case we say this is what they call this is what we call a static Electrical energy system stuff like that. That's what I'm talking about there. Is the air that keeps it intact. So that's what we're going to be discussing. We're discussing on static energy, and we'll also be discussing on Coulomb's law of electrostatics. We're discussing on the first and second law. Of, we'll take on the second, first and second law of Coulomb's, and we'll also be discussing on some problems, and we'll be discussing on electric potential and, and stuff like that. So let us get that, that into the video. So we have Coulomb's law of electrostatics, and we say the first law of Coulomb's law state that like charges repel why unlike charges what attract you should know you should remember this one like charges when you have a positive and a positive it's what it repels let's see this d to what it repels but let us say you have a positive and you have a negative it's what attract it's what attract because these are all these are all like chi unlike ch charges so now the second law of coulomb say that the force that the force on on the two sets on the, on two charges is equal to or is directly proportional to the magnitude of the product or should I say the product between the two of them in in inverse relationship to their distance. With that being said, in mathematical relationship, we say F is directly proportional to Q1 Q2 over d squared. So if you if you if you that you have a constant k but this square this constant k we can we can say that this constant k it has a value the value is equal to 9 times 10 to the power 9 is also equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught you say this epsilon naught is permittivity due to free space so we will be going into that very soon so let us i will say epsilon naught let us give that it is equal to 8 point 8.5 times 10 to the power minus 12. So if, when you do the math, you get 9 times 10 to the power 9. Let us see, see, let us see an example. Let me clean this. Let us see an example. Let's play this board. Let's see an example. Now, we have a diagram. Let's play the diagram. This is A, this is D, this is C, and this is D. We have the, f the mass taking it down. We have force, and we have also T sine theta, the vertical component, and we have the MG also. And we also have force. We know it, this distance to this distance is equal to 12 centimeters. 12 centimeter and here is 20 centimeter 20 centimeter so the question will be displayed on the screen now so now what we have been asked to do is calculate the force 
of repulsion between the two spheres. It's to calculate what the force of repulsion. Remember the, the formula I gave there at the previous I say F is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over the square. This is the force we are looking for. So now, let us impute our values. We have A equals what? K, which is equal to 9 times 10 to the power 9, times Q1, Q2, which we don't know. But we know that the charges are equal. We know that so we can just equate it with 1 Q over the distance, and the distance is what? 0.2. 24, sorry, this is 24. When you add, so we're going to gonna, in meters, remember it's going to be in meters, you must not forget that. In meters. So now, what we need to do now is to get what our Q. We need to get what our what Q because we don't know Q yet. We've gotten this, we've gotten this, we've gotten Now let us, now to get the Q, let us solve. Oh, sorry, this is not, uh, this is not the solving question. If, let us say we have, 9 times 10 to the power 9 and our charges are let us say 1 and 2 and, and the rest now let us get some things down before we stop these equations i'll be writing some things here now say each pair is under the action of these three forces this each pair that means this pair here let's say fair whatever you call it is under the action of three forces we have the mass we have number one we have the what the weight the weight mg Two, we have the words tension, tension T, and we have three, we have the words the electrostatic force. This is the weight, the tension, the tension is along this line, and this is the word the force. So let us bring that down, let us bring it out. We have a straight line here, we have mass. We have angle theta, angle theta, we have the force, and this is our mass, and we know this is T cos theta along the horizontal axis, and also along this is T sin theta. We have to write that down, but you understand that. So now, if we let us calculate it, let us calculate now all the forces now, let us calculate the forces on the X axis, calculating all the forces on the X axis, we have the negative. G plus what T sin theta. Equating them, we have T sin theta because now on the y axis we have what force. We have the we have force. We can take it this way. This way. We also we have force. Now our force is going this way, so it is negative. So we can say negative force. So let us just do this way. So we have just force equals to T cos theta. Now to get your resultant, to get your resultant, your resultant now will be what? Resultant will be what? Y over X. I will say this is for the Y, so the Y will be equal to what? F equal to T cos theta. So it's going to be, it's going to be sine, it's going to be T sine theta, not because the Y. So this is the, for the Y, I mean a mistake there. Yeah. I, I guess you must have figured that out already. So we say T sine theta is equal to mg divided by T cos theta equals to F. Now, the T cancels out to sine over cos is equal to tan. So we can say tan theta is equal to mg over F. Now to, now to get tan theta, we know tan theta is equal to opposite over what adjacent and they, let us go back to our diagram we have our little if we, if we if we say we should take our opposite this way we can take it this way we can take it this way so our opposite now will be what eg over what adjacent which is what 12 so we can see write it i think this place is conjected let me take it there so we can see our tan theta is equal to eg which is the opposite over adjacent which is what DC, which is equal to MG over what? F. So your F, now to get your EG, now to get the AD, we know that this is a right angle triangle, so we'll solve it using what? Using what? Thank you. Use this solve Pythagoras theorem. So now our AD will be equal to square root of AB squared minus BG squared. Our AD 
will be equal to the sub the mass right yeah ready will be equal to the summing of this now we have our eb so we are doing this one and then we have 20 0 0.20 if it's the meters squared minus bg which is 0 0.12 square now when you solve the solve it your force what have you gotten into force will be equal to i mean i want to write this down very well the force will be equal to mg times dc which is what 12 0.12 meters over eg you get your eg your force will be equal to 7.4 and seven power minus 4 newtons let me clean this part so now putting that in our formula we have q we got to the square root of force 7.4 Times 10 to the power minus 4 over 156.25 times 10 to the power 9. Your Q should be equal to 6.9 times 10 to the power minus 8 coulombs. Now, you know why I squared it because we have what? The square root. So, we use the square to, to cancel out that. We use the square root to cancel out that square. I hope you are following. So, now let us check another example. To be more conversant with this, I suggest if you don't understand, I suggest you go back and pause the video and play it slowly at your own speed. So now we have an we have an example to so we have a force sixteen. So let me write now we have a force due to a which is sixteen micro coulombs. B which is nine micro coulombs and C which is the coulombs we don't know. So I want to know the charge that will be placed that will not have an effect or will I say that it will be equal to zero. Something like that. From here to know we don't know. Because we are looking for what the charge that is going to affect now but we know from here to here is equal to eight centimeter. So now the force on one to three is equal to what k which we all know 16 times 10 to the power minus 6 times 6 you can say here is our what 1 is our 2 and is our 3 so the force on here to here if you do from here to here you do from here to here but we are directing it to this that's why we are taking from here to here if you are taking for b we say from here to here from here to here that's what i'm talking about but our main point is at point c so we, we do it this way this is q over x plus 0 0.08 I, I know i hope you know why it's 0 0.08 now you've gotten that now you have to get your force 2 to 3 remember we're saying we are taking everything to q there so we have 10 raised to power minus 6 times q over x squared now when the force is when the when the when it will not affect this force it must be that means the force the force the force relating to three to one to three and the force relating to two to three must be equal that means they must counterbalance themselves because we don't want any 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 we don't want any force to act to to, to be exerted on this third one so we say our f f one to three must be equal to our f Two to three for no for zero electrostatic force at C, which is this point for zero electrostatic force at C F one zero must be equal to F two to three. Now when you equate it, you have Q sixteen times ten to the power minus six times Q over X plus zero point zero eight all squared must be equal to K times nine times ten to the power minus six times Q all over x squared this cancel this do the math you should your x should be a value around 0 0.24 meter converting it to meter or to send to meter converting to centimeter which is a more higher one we have it this way so now this at this distance when you place 
when you place the, the charge on that distance, it will have zero electrostatic force on the third charge there. It will have exactly zero electrostatic force. Now let us talk on the ele electric field. Let's talk on the electric field. Let me clean this part. You can just go back to the, you can see go back to the video and watch it at your speed as I said earlier on. I think this marker is diminishing. So let us talk on electric field. We say an electric field is a region where electric forces can be felt by a charged body. The electric field around the charged body is represented by imaginary lines we call electric lines of force. Now when we talk this and let us say this is an electric field. There is a force going out. That's what I'm talking about. Force. Now all this force is what we call electric lines of force. Electric lines of force. And I would like to give you some properties of these electric lines of force. I'm going to write it down. Properties of these electric lines of force. I'll be seeing them on the screen. Now we have electric line, electric field lines flow from a positive charge and terminate at a negative volt charge. Number two, we say electric field lines leaves or enter the charge surface normally. That means it goes normally. That means it goes perpendicularly at an angle 90 to the surface. So we say electric lines of force cannot pass through a conductor. This means electric lines of field inside the conductor is equal to zero. It can pass through what a conductor. Now we say number four is that electric lines of force have the tendency to cohabit with oppositely charged bodies. Like when I made the first, I said. I said something like this. Oh, my marker is beginning to go down. Let me change it. So I say the positive. Just say it goes like this. I have the negative. It can cohabit. And I wonder what they mean by cohabiting there. And also electric lines of physical tendency to expand lateral. That means they tend to separate from each other in a perpendicular direction to its length. That's when, for instance, this is also a positive. Because I to just go this way, go this way, go their separate ways, or not even, not even align the same. say go this way, go this way, go this way, go this way. That's what I'm talking about. So now we are done with that. Now let's talk on the electric field intensity. I'm trying to cover every topic that has to do with electrostatics. You know what I'm talking about. So now we talk. Um, we say electro electric field is that force that is acting on the unit's positively charged body at a point. You know what I'm talking about? The electric field intensity is the force acting on the unit positively charged body at a point. It's, and when it's acting on that, on that body, the direction is along the, along the, the direction is along the force. This is what we say electric, electric intensity E can be equal to a force over charge. I say the force acting on the unit positively charged. So we say force acting on unit positively charged. So now we're talking about electric flux. We say electric flux is the total electric lines of force which flows outward from a positively charged charged body. So when we talk about electric flux, let's say this is a, so the electric flux this you can say electric flux is the is the not is the what is the lines of force which flow outward from a positively charged electric flux. You know what I'm talking about? So now electric flux crossing normally per unit area on that surface is what you call an electric flux density. So now this electric flux is crossing perpendicularly per unit area. We say this is an electric flux density and we represent it with G. And remember we represent an electric flux with the symbol phi. Electric, electric flux density. So now I mean sorry, let's electric flux. Now for electric flux density D, we say it is the flux going per unit area. And it can also be equal to epsilon naught, epsilon relative times the electric field intensity. Now we also talk about electric potential. We say electric potential is the amount of work done in bringing a unit positively charged from infinity to that point. We say electric potential. All these, all these, all these, all these subtopics I'm giving out, you're going to be meeting it in in anything we are studying about electrostatics. So we talk about electric potential. Talk about electric potential. We say it is the work work done in bringing the unit positively charged body from infinity to that what point. So it's the charge done. It's the work done on a particular charge. If the field is due to a positive 
charge. That means there's a work done against the field. Let's say, for instance, when you calculate and you have a positive value of, of your of your electric potential, you know that, that there's, a, there's a work done what against the electric field. But if it is a negative, then it's done out. Then the work that the, the electric field is done is doing work against the surrounding. So with that being said, we would like to discuss on magnetic circuit. Yeah, is this the first time you're hearing it? Yeah, so thank you. So now just take so stay tuned to the video. So we talk about magnetic circuit. You see, magnetic circuit is a closed path followed by a magnetic flux. The magnetic circuit is a closed path followed by a magnetic what? flux. Yeah, on a magnetic circuit, the magnetic flux leave the north poles, passes through the entire circuit and return to the starting point. So now let us see this is a this is a magnetic circuit. Let me draw this nicely. There is a body. Let us see these are the wires wounded around it. So I'll show you this. It leaves the North Pole. It leaves the North Pole and leaves the North Pole and still come back to that same North Pole. So, we, so now, with that being said, and we also know that examples of these is, is well, in the magnetic circuit usually consists of materials with high permeability. That means the materials that have tendency to retain magnetic properties and these are iron steel and and the rest it is because of this material offer very what this is very little resistance to the flow of magnetic flux iron especially you can you almost have testified to putting iron in a magnet you can see the total lovely attraction it has for it so now i would like to i would like to analyze this magnetic circuit that is the syndrome now consider the magnetic circuit which is this so now the flux density in this material, the flux density in this material is equal to over area. So now the magnetizing force in this material is equal to H. I'll be giving out now I'll be just be giving out the formulas out. The magnetism for magnetic force in the material. This is for the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux density in that material. So now, according to work done to work done law, the work done moving a unit a unit magnetic pole once around the magnetic circuit. So now let's just say this is the magnetic circuit part we have. We have E, D, C, G to A. These are these are the magnetic circuit. Is equal to the ampere ton. So that means the work done, which is the work done H L. Is equal with equal we say work done is equal to force times what distance. So we can say H L times what is equal to Newton what mm, sorry tons per tons ampere. Now we say the work done is equal to, equal to tons ampere. So now the quantity now the quantity we call reluctance. Quantity we call reluctance is equal to one over area. Now this is what we call reluctance, and we say, and what do we say reluctance is? We say reluctance is what is the opposition that the magnetic circuit offers to the flux as it is flowing around it. So it's just like resistance. Actually, this this magnetic circuit is has the total the total total resemblance to Ohm's law because if you're talking about V is equal to I R, we can say this I is also equal to magnetic. Uh, magnetic flux r is equal to what reluctance which is equal to this and v is equal to is equal to the magnetic flux density or mag yes, mag the magnetic flux density also you know what i'm talking about there so now let us let us have let us treat an example so that we can have a clear understanding of this so now an example of this let us observe this diagram So now, what we want to do now, number one, is to get the magnetic magnetomotor, mag <laughs> magnetic motive force of the coil, and the magnetic motive foil of the coil is equal to what N I, the M M F, is equal to what N I, which is Newton ampere. I mean tons per ampere. Now to get the I, we, we, which we want to get our I, we say is equal to what V over what R. If you remember what I said, is equal to just similar to, to the Ohm's law from uh, formula. To so our I is equal to 2.5 ampere. Now, in fitting it into the formula, we have our tons to be 300 
times I, which is 2.5, equal to 750 ampere tons. Now, number, now we've gotten our magnetomotive force. Now, to get our field strength, what did I say? Our field strength, it's, can you remember? To get our field strength, our field strength is equal to HL. I said it equals to NI. Now, the field strength is equal to this H, or you can say it's equal to the strength or the work done. You know what I'm talking about? So we say our H is equal to NI over L. Our N is equal to what? NI, which is 750 over L, which is. Now, this, this length we have here is what? Is the, is, the circum, is the mean circumference of, the, of this of the circle that we have here. Now, it is equal to what? 1 is 75 ampere tons per what per meter so now we have now we want to get our what our what flux density i'm just solving it so that you can know how this is applied now we have our flux density v which is equal to mu h our flux density is equal to what mu h and we also know that mu is equal to mu naught mu r is equal to 4 pi times 10 raised to the power minus 7 times 900 times 1 is 7 5. Now, solving that, we should have 0 2.1 to Weber per what? Per meter squared. So now, without, now that I'll discuss on the lockdowns also, let's talk on, let me split the board here. Just, just discuss on reluctance. We say our reluctance S. Reluctance I'm represented with S. Our reluctance is equal to what? Magnetomotive force per flux. And that is equal to what? If you remember when I said V is equal to I, and that does make R subject to formula, and we know what V is here now. So we say R is equal to what? We say is equal to V over I. Remember now we say so V is equal to magnetomotive force, why I is equal to flux and R is equal to this. So it's just the same, but you must not you must know when you're talking on on, on a magnetic circuit and when you're talking about electric circuit. Now say 750 times 10 is equal to minus 4, which is equal to what? Equal to 7.75 times 10 is equal to 4. So now with that being said. I will I'll also give them I also give a comprehension to test your understanding of this topic. Bye bye.